True to his name as a guardian deity, the Ayanar temple is usually located at the peripherals or boundaries of rural villages. The village god Ayanar, who fights against demons and evil spirits that are threatening the villages, stands like a colossus with a threatening look at a secluded, deserted locality filled with palm trees in Taiping Ulusapatang. The monumental idol of this gigantic Ayanar is the biggest in Southeast Asia, and he has taken residence here not only to protect the villagers, but also to improve the spiritual quality of life that is full of righteousness and compassion. The yellow dhoti clad Ayanar is often pictured as riding a white horse with a sword in his hand. His self-imposed duty is to protect the people against evil and establish everlasting justice among his people. Ayanar is born of Lord Vishnu in the Mohini incarnation and Lord Shiva and his terracotta figures are kept on the outskirts of most of the villages in Tamil Nadu. But the awe-inspiring Ayanar in Taiping, Malaysia is the largest in Southeast Asia and he protects the people standing guard at a distance of 280 kilometers from Kuala Lumpur and a three and a half hour drive from Kuala Lumpur will take you to him. The temple of Taiping Ulusapatang's Ayanar came into being even before the Japanese rule over Malaysia. It was all an effort of a migrant Indian worker from Madurai in Tamil Nadu, an old woman. Called Periyama, this woman had in fact brought a handful of sand to Malaysia from her native homeland. Legend has it that the elderly Periyama deposited the handful of sand at the foot of a tree and started worshipping her god. At that time, Malaysia was under English colonialism. An English officer objected to this practice of worship and reasoned that the workers who had been brought here to cut off the trees could not worship at the foot of them. The heartbroken Periyama vowed that one day that very officer would request her to continue to worship the handful of sand she had brought from India. On the same night, the Englishman dreamt of something that was beyond his comprehension. In his dream, cow's milk sprang forth from the very tree under whose foot the Periyama had launched her worship. The Englishman was alarmed initially, but felt as though some better counsel had prevailed upon him. What a wonder! The next day, when the Englishman visited the tree, he found to his great astonishment that the dream had come true. He relented, accepted that it was all divine intervention, and instantly granted permission to the Periyama to start her worship of the handful of sand. Later, an idol of clay was erected at the very site that is preserved even to this date, and pujas are regularly offered. Another person who is closely associated with the history of the temple is Mr. Damodran, who was instrumental in establishing it here. There was another temple in the plantation fields at some distance from the present site of Ayanar Temple, where the workers used to go for worship. When Damodran was involved in a love affair, he made a vow at that temple that he would erect an idol for God Muniswarar if his love came to fruition successfully. His love affair blossomed into marriage and the couple was also blessed with two children. But somehow, the couple had overlooked the vow they had made at the temple. Later, when they happened to visit the temple, an old woman who was in a trance reminded the couple how they had made a vow that was not fulfilled.
people were suddenly jolted out of how the vow had slipped their minds. So, in order to fulfill the vow, Damodran made arrangements for consecrating an idol dedicated to Jada Muniswara. But the couple would not have realized then that the spiritual relationship they had with Ayanar would one day result in the establishment of one of the biggest idols in Southeast Asia. The construction of this temple was completed in 1998. 18 tons of steel, 4,000 packs of cement, 43,000 of bricks were used in the construction process. The INR idol here is the biggest in Malaysia. On one occasion, an apparition in the form of Damodran appeared before his wife and prophesied that his fame would one day spread far and wide to all corners of the world. Whatever happened after this incident is all miraculous. Ayanar inspired Damodran to dig a well near the temple. Those days the temple was in the middle of the thick forest and there remained severe water scarcity. So much so that it was difficult to get water even for conducting pujas for Jedamuni. The people instantly inferred that Ayanar wanted them to dig a well just to overcome the water shortage. The ground was dug ten feet deep, there was no trace of water. It was the same situation.